Well, here's an article that I find quite interesting. Uh, I come out of Haaretz. It's uh, entitled, Trump administration wants to see a Gaza ceasefire with or without the Palestinian Authority. So this is something that you want to keep your eye on and uh, uh, see where it actually goes because they could be one piece of the puzzle or they may be the only piece of the puzzle that the uh, Trump administration will uh, uh, decides to deal with as far as the Palestinian Authority is concerned. Now let me give you a little information about this report. It says that the uh, Trump administration wants to see a long term ceasefire in Gaza with or without the support of the Palestinian Authority, a spokesman from the White House uh, National Security Council told Haaretz on Monday. The administration, uh, this spokesman, uh, spokesperson explained, would view the return of the Palestinian Authority to Gaza as a positive development, but uh, wants to see a stable ceasefire in place regardless of whether or not the PA has a role in it. The spokesperson explained that the Trump administration supports Egypt's efforts to uh, secure a ceasefire in Gaza and remains in close communication with Israel, Egypt, and the UN with respect to Gaza. The spokesperson added that we would like to see an end to fighting with or without the PA, but emphasized that the administration still believes it would be best if the PA reasserts control in Gaza as, uh, so we can get on with making lives better. On Wednesday, Israel's security cabinet will convene once again to discuss the situation in Gaza amid reports of progress in the negotiations led by Egypt and the UN to reach a long-term ceasefire between Israel and Hamas. In addition, Israeli Defense Minister Lieberman is expected to announce the reopening of the Karim Shalom uh, border crossing between Israel and Gaza on Wednesday morning, assuming no security incidents uh, take place before then. President Trump's special envoy to the uh, peace process, Jason Greenblatt, has said on a number of occasions over the past year that the Trump administration uh, or the Trump peace plan uh, team would like to see the PA return to Gaza and take control over their, over this situation there. On Monday, the uh, Israeli Channel 10 reported that uh, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu had held a secret meeting with Egyptian President Sisi uh, two months ago in which the two leaders discussed ways to improve the situation in Gaza. Sisi, according to the report, emphasized that the long-term goal has to be a return of the PA to Gaza. Palestinian officials, meanwhile, accused the Trump administration's policies of worsening the situation in Gaza, especially the ongoing freezing of more than 200 million uh, of American aid to the Palestinians that had been authorized by Congress, but are being uh, put on hold by the White House. A large sum of this money was supposed to go to humanitarian groups and projects in Gaza. Another source for concern in Gaza is the American cut in funding for UNRWA, the UN agency in charge of the Palestinian refugees and their descendants, which operates many of the schools and welfare programs in Gaza. Arab diplomats had previously criticized the administration for trying to raise money from the Gulf countries for projects in Gaza at the same time uh, it was is it is cutting American support for the Palestinians uh, there by hundreds of millions of dollars. Well, the bottom line is is that the Gulf nations should are the ones that should be responsible for this group as it is. You know, again, this is just another example of a free ride by the uh, Islamic and Arab world. They're criticizing us Americans for not giving them free money. You know, it's hard to believe that they can't see that it's our money to begin with. We're giving it away as a gift. They're not entitled to it, although they feel like they're entitled to it. The one thing I wanted to point out in this article is that it uh, indicates that the United States is interested in doing a deal uh, as part of a regional plan with uh, Hamas, I guess it would be, in the, in, the, in the Gaza Strip, and have Egypt and Israel broker this deal uh, to, include, to, to include it in this grand uh, deal of the century that uh, the Trump administration is about ready to unveil. And you know what? It wouldn't shock me a bit if they came out and said that 
the C spire is going to last seven years. Now, of course, that's speculation on my part and wishful thinking. But, you know, that's just the way it is when you've been doing prophecy as long as I have. Everything has a meaning, in my opinion. Uh, if uh, they do do a ceasefire, I do look for it to be seven years, but it, it probably won't be seven years. But this is just something you need to keep your eye on. But another thing that may come out of this is that uh, if, in fact, all of the financial support and recognition is switched over to Gaza instead of to the West Bank and the uh, Fatah organization, that may bring the uh, PA over to uh, the negotiating table that much quicker, especially if all the aid that the United States has got is being directed only at uh, the Gaza Strip. And as I've said many times, uh, because of the fact that the United States is with withdrawing all the funds uh, going to the West Bank, the PA, money is definitely beginning to be tight in that region. And before too long, and I'm not sure what the time frame is, they may have to the end of the year, they may have a little longer. Somebody else is going to have to pick up the slack besides uh, the nations that have already contributed millions of dollars. And frankly, I don't know if I actually see that happening. Again, as I told you in the last video, they're over $200 million short uh, because of this temporary aid withdrawal by the United States. And it may not be temporary, but if, if, I, if I were the part of the PA, I'd get smart. I'd get back to the table. I'd see what the United States, the Arab world, and possibly even the, the European Union is offering them if, in fact, they do come to the table and eventually bring peace. But right now, I think that the uh, PA is seeing what kind of attention could be coming to the Gaza Strip, and it should be coming to them, but they flat refuse to come to the table. The Gaza Strip may very well take their place. And you very well may see a, uh, an agreement by, with the uh, regional, a regional agreement with the Arab world, the Islamic world, the modern Arab world, and uh, with Israel and many, which would mean that it would probably be uh, the European Union may be in on it. Of course, the U.S. will probably be in on it. And I'm sure that Mr. Trump has in some way planned this in order to entice the PA, the Fatah movement, back to the drawing table and back to the negotiating table in order to make this happen. But as I've said many times, uh, even though it looks like the Trump administration is in full control of the peace process, Daniel 9, 25 through 27 leads us to believe that it will, that this peace accord will come out of uh, a man who will rise up out of the European Union. Now, of course, we could be misinterpreting the scripture that uh, the person who uh, comes out of the European Union could play a part in the uh, peace accord and may not be completely over the entire peace accord. But if the uh, European Union is involved and they are not the lead participants in the lead, but only partners in this particular peace accord, remember what I've told I said in the past that. The United States may very well be a representative of Israel, whereas uh, the European Union could be the representative in this deal for the PA. And, you know, that goes, uh, the reason why I say that is because uh, the West Bank or the PA will not come back to the table because they feel that the United States is not a fair broker of peace and that they're biased toward Israel. Well, it's very, it's very, it's likely, that, you know, this could happen that the uh, European Union could uh, have uh, or play a part in uh, being the representative in this negotiation with the United States. So it might be the U.S. versus the European Union, and uh, they work something out. So that's in the best interest of both Israel and the Palestinian Authority. But somewhere in the mix, there will be seven years discussed. Now, whether or not it will be made known to the world is unknown. Maybe it's only mentioned in the Bible. But what is clear also in that scripture is that midway through at the uh, three and a half year mark, that the, that the agreement will be broken. The Antichrist will come forth and he will declare himself to be God. But I just wanted to point this out to you and make sure that uh, you're up to date with all the possibilities. And uh, if you don't know the Lord, today is the day of salvation. You know, 150,000 people will die today. The Bible says the vast majority of them will end up in a burning hell. Don't let that happen to you. Come to the Lord, ask Him to save you, ask Him to forgive you of your sins, and from this day forward, live for Him. And you Christians, you need a copy of my Tribulation Period Survival Guide. 
you need to get it in the hands of every lost loved one that you know. You know, I would prefer that you get the paper bag version because you can physically hand that to your lost friend or loved one. And they can either put it on their shelf, uh, hide it away, or whatever the case may be. But at some point in time, they're going to use it. So you need to get this copy into their hands. If you prefer the free version, you're welcome to go and follow the link to get the free version. It's written in nine different languages. Same book, same message, same uh, uh, beginning that, indi that tells you that you need to be saved. And it also gives you good survival tactics uh, in this book. So go ahead and get a copy of this for your lost friend and loved one and make sure they have this on their shelf once the tribulation or once the rapture of the church and the tribulation period begin. You know, I believe that everyone who reads this book will eventually get saved. But for, for no other reason than to make an investment in this book than that, I, that's what I would choose. Well, this is Terry Malone with the Calvary Prophecy Report.